Why are your trendy Etsy listings not selling? Maybe you watch some YouTube videos about the top trends for Etsy this year. You put those trends in your shop and now you're wondering, why am I not getting sales? In today's video, I'm going to actually show you why your trendy Etsy listings are not getting sales. And it's because we are not doing that trend in a trendy way. So remember, if you take a stab at a trend and if you don't hit the nail on the head, it is going to look cheap and outdated. If you would like myself and my team of coaches to jump into your shop and give you one-on-one -on -one private coaching, just comment below help and we will get you a link to learn more about that opportunity. In one of my previous videos, I talk about the retro Western trend and also the kind of cosmic cowgirl trend. Here's an example of the retro Western trend here on Pinterest. You can see we have usually a combination of words and a graphic with cowboy hat, cowboy boots, and uh, it's kind of vintage inspired, but done in a very trendy way. And then the cosmic cowgirl trend is a little bit different. You'll see sometimes they'll mix in kind of moons or astrology type of things, and then disco balls, metallics, bright colors, much more of a pop feel to it. So this is a Christian take on kind of retro Western. I love the idea, but I, I think we should do the execution a bit differently. Mock-up is not bad, but the coloring and the font is off. The design itself, when you're looking on mobile, it is so fine and the contrast is not quite there. I would have the lettering and the actual design be quite a bit darker or maybe more bold. I think it's a little too tall and skinny and I would not be having the font in that kind of arch shape. I do think that's hurting it. And as we can see, not a trendy fit, even where it's like hitting them, but it's like tight, so it's not like loose. I don't really see any of the color combinations serving this design well. When we look up retro Western, like a better way to do that would be something like this, right? With the fit, so it's same length, but this is the comfort color style, which is a, a lot more trendy in the color options and, and the silhouette. And the high contrast element of this design just makes it much easier to stand out on mobile. Also the hairstyle, the biker shorts, much, much more trendy than something like, you know, brick background. I would make some changes to the design and I think it would do a lot better. But I like the combination of a Christian theme with a retro Western theme. Here's a great one that is actually combining two trends that I talked about in a previous video, the bow trend and the kind of cosmic cowgirl Western trend. Now, a couple things here. I do like the idea of the bows with the cowgirl boots and I like the idea of the denim cutoffs and kind of the oversized fit, but I do think there's an issue happening with the coloring because this photo is taken in a way where this is like a shadow on the front. So it almost looks gray or grayish blue instead of pure white. And then the designs don't look like they are in a shadow. So it definitely looks like a mock-up. It doesn't look real for that reason. So I also don't think gray tends to work very well with like light pink designs like this with that much detail, just not enough contrast. It's a slightly better if the bows were different colors. So it's not so monochromatic. Again, I would probably integrate some different shades of pink here in the design just so it pops better on the backgrounds they're choosing. This is probably the best mock-up I'm seeing if we got rid of the beads and the eucalyptus here. If they got rid of the shoes and the denim and put this on a different background, I think that would be good. Okay, this actually, we're getting better. This is probably a better mock-up. It's much more modern looking than that because that kind of gets dated and you're gonna be polarizing with that type of denim in those, those shoes. I hope you can see what I mean when we are looking for retro Western. Here on Etsy, we can see some people doing it really, really well. You know, yes, tall words, but changing up the sizes of the fonts. That is bigger, that is smaller. Changing up the color of the fonts. The fit on the mock-ups, very trendy. High contrast between the design and the background. Let's look at this next one. Now, the straw topper trend, that has been a really great product on Etsy and those Stanley cup owners love their straw toppers. So this is something where when we look at straw topper, you see not the ads, but the organic ones, very trendy, right? They look very clean, crisp, trendy. They show the colors really nicely. Then we move into this option. And this is where all of a sudden we're starting to look really outdated for the elements in the photo that are not the product itself. That white shiplap, it really dates the product. And then the color and the style of those straws also kind of dating the product. So they'd be much better off with like a thick clear straw or a glitter straw, or maybe even an authentic Stanley straw. It looks like these actually come with the straw though. I guess they can't probably do much about that, which 
is okay, but then in that case, it would be so much better off if they did like a listing for the strawberry ones and they had like 10 of the strawberry ones in the same photo. I just think this is not looking trendy the way that they have all these different colors and aesthetics going on. I think they'd be much better off if it showed a bulk quantity of one at a time. The only exception I would say is probably the sports, combining the sports into one listing. I hope you can see that the background and the props used in this image, as well as the font and this overlay, right? Everything about that overlay can date a listing. So what we wanna do is just make some updates here. I think it would do really, really well if they make those updates, separate these out into other listings. Now let's look at another trend kind of in the Tumblr arena. And these are toppers for actual Stanley cups. If you look up Stanley topper, actually these are more like name plates. You will see all of these different trends for Stanley name plates. And then let's take a look on Etsy. And things that you wanna pay attention to are color combinations, font choices, merchandising, right? What's in the background, things like that. What I wanna point out with this one is color combinations. So what we wanna make sure is that any kind of color combination that we choose for our main listing photo is going to make it really obvious what the product is, what it does, what the value is. The value in this is that it's personalized, right? And it's acrylic and it's for a premium product and a premium customer which is fantastic. I also do like how the blue ties into the background here, but if I was taking this photo, I would actually hold this completely over the pool. So the blue kind of pool background is basically the entire background behind this. Um, it's just a lot of gray and like shadowing happening, which I think is distracting because the pool is just peeking out. I do think like this is so much better because the contrast here, I think what happens with a thin font like this and that color is it gets a little bit lost on such a busy silver background. However, when you do it something like this, where it's really a crisp white font, this shows the depth of that acrylic, right? Which is great, that shows depth. I do tend to think that this blue color is not super trendy unless you put it with another neon or start to get into some two-tone blues. If you get into blue color gradient, right? Where you are combining something like that aqua blue with then like other shades of blue, maybe they even have like, like some stars on that top or in that color. And then it's on like a light blue top so it's all like in the same color family that would make that very trendy. So I, I think it's just the color combination in that font choice specifically that is less trendy. Keep that and keep that and then move that block font into something super, super modern and crisp. Let's get into the reading and kind of bookish trend. This is not a new trend, okay? But it is still a trend on Etsy. So here's some examples of this trend. Now, just having the word like read on something, I think it's a little too vanilla to do really well on Etsy. I also think the plant in the background here makes it really dated. Even the material of that side table and that type of vase, and then the other accent pillow behind it, that all makes it a little bit dated feeling. So if you're gonna do a pillow, you wanna make sure that your pillow is in a setting that is very modern, right? Even if your pillow is meant to be kind of vintage inspired, put it in a modern setting because that will just emphasize that it is vintage inspired even more. We definitely don't want like a, a mock-up like this where it's on like kind of wrinkled. It almost looks like bedding or something. Looks like this is the same shop. I think having a button or a pin that is related to reading could be great, but let's think of something a little more unique and special that would make someone buy it or personalized, which would be great. Here is an example. I think this might be the same shop, My Reading Time. Okay, so it's a blanket. Love the idea of blankets for print on demand, but My Reading Time. Same thing I see people doing this with like a coffee cup where it says like My Coffee Cup or My Notebook or, you know, Tote, My Tote. We don't wanna do that. We're basically putting a label of what the object is on the object. It just doesn't really offer much value. We wanna always have a strong value proposition. So if you're gonna do that, it's either gotta be the design or the words. I would say on a blanket, if you're not going to do something personalized or like a quote that you have the right to use, I probably wouldn't put any words on it. It could tend to look a little bit vanilla. Okay, this is a reading blanket. It has dogs reading. And I think just with the mock-up, it just doesn't really align with the model in the mock-up. I think it would do much better with a simple, simple background. It's not personalized. And what is special, unique about this? Would someone love this so much or think that that their friend or family member would love this so much that they would buy it for them. You know, so it would do so much better if it was personalized, even with like the photo of the dog or the name, even something like that. Sometimes a lot of people feel compelled to add words to things that they shouldn't. Always ask yourself, does this design actually need words or am 
I just trying to fill some blank space with some words? Because in my mind, word, image, word, image, I have to keep them together, right? You don't have to, you really don't have to. Now let's take a look at the monochromatic trend because we talked about that in a previous video where you use different shades of one color family. In that trend, we do it in a way where it's not bleeding together like ombre. We do it where it's more like blocking. So more of a color gradient, you could say. Now this, they're layering kind of a light pink design on a light pink sweatshirt. And with how high contrast those hearts are and the underline with the heart in it, those black elements are so high contrast that if you scroll by it really fast, could you tell what it says? Probably not. So I would say, you know what? You don't have to offer every color of the sweatshirt. If you are just sold on the light pink Mimi lettering, maybe you just skip that color. You don't even offer it. Because if something doesn't look good, if a color combination doesn't look good, don't offer it. Do not even offer it. That is you doing your customer a favor because they don't have to sift through bad color options to find the good ones. They don't have to think and make a decision to nix the bad color option to then narrow it down to the good ones. You should be doing the legwork for them there. Maybe they just have this color and this color probably wouldn't even do that color. I think we have way too many color options here. I'd probably keep it to like two or three colors. Another one where we're looking at the kind of color gradient theme. I see we're kind of doing that with the teal, this kind of periwinkle, and then a darker turquoise, but having this bright yellow, bright orange. And I think this would do a lot better if they're wanting to have it on this color background, if they remove the periwinkle yellow and the orange and just focus on maybe like a navy blue and then maybe like a white powder blue or kind of like a cornflower blue, right? All of that is gonna have more contrast. You wanna have each of the letters have equal contrast from the background for the for this to work. Let's take a look at an example of this. So I'm, I'm gonna type in color gradient retro font. Okay, we kind of see it here. You can see like lash drip, right? Okay, here's some other ones where it's kind of like the red and the pink. It's almost like the outline is another color. And then I do tend to think that that looks better when you do kind of an outline in one color and then, you know, it's almost like a layered look. I think that does tend to look better than having each letter be a different color. And you can see this here on Etsy, like you can actually get this retro font with layers to it. So um, I think that is a great example. Like here, the blues and the greens in the monochromatic look, right? Same thing with the purple right here. Just a good example of that. Let's dive into another trend, the checker trend. So here's an example of a physical handmade product. Love the idea of these hair clips. I don't realize that they're hair clips though, because I can't see the back. I've no idea how that would work, how big they are, size and scale, right? I can't tell that from the listing photo, but I do think the biggest problem here that is making this look outdated is the background itself. So I would say if you could take this, put it on a different background, it will look a lot more trendy. A background that I would do, I mean, even this is a bit better. You just don't want the background to be in the same exact color families, you know, kind of so close in color here where it doesn't really pop. And there's so much space around these that it's really hard to have my focus be only on these because I'm looking at, okay, the folds and the fabric, things like that. You know, even if the background was something like this kind of pink color, and then you can see how that kind of acrylic would pop off of that. You know, this is kind of a cool pink background and then more of a warm beige and tan coloring. So I think that would really help. We're like 95% of the way there in terms of trendiness. I think it's just the photos that are gonna really help push it over the line. We also wanna make sure fonts are staying really trendy too. So might be making updates to those. And then let's take a look at another another one. So this is a checker print blanket. First of all, I think this is a better mock-up because it, even though these plants are not super modern and trendy, uh, I do think this shows the design elements much better. My thing here is I wouldn't go black and white. I think that is making this look a little bit dated, especially with this font. It would do better with kind of light pastel retro tones. This is another checker kind of themed thing in the shop. And I would say a couple things about this, the design, needs some other color besides just white and this. And then I, I also think I would put it on potentially a different mock-up. Even this is a little bit better. It's not bad. This is maybe okay. The colors themselves, I would probably also change out into some more trendy colors, like maybe the kind of chalky Stanley lilac color would be better, right? Something's a little bit throwing me off a little bit. The color and then the paw print, I might do like, you know, a different pattern on that paw print. And I might also, instead of saying dog mama, I might say, make this personalized. 
Okay, now let's look at the bow trend. I'm seeing so many of these bows looking super outdated and they're just missing the mark. So here's an example of someone with a bow trend shirt. Now, a big reason this is not hitting is because of the outdated vibe of the background here. Beads like super outdated. They will date your mock-up. This denim, I don't think it's helping. A book that like, there's just so much going on. And then the vibe of this shirt is so different than everything else, like completely different aesthetic. I also think just putting like Times New Roman Roman words over the design is hurting it. And we want to make sure that the contrast is makes sense. So you don't want to put like a bow like this. It doesn't really even look like a bow. So it's not standing out as well. If you want to do words, let's take a look at some ways that you could do words. Okay. Here's an example with words. It says you are so loved and a Bible verse on it. Love it. Super trendy fit. Great outline, monochromatic kind of two tone vibes. Same thing with this option. Totally overpower the bow, which is good because one has to overpower the other. You don't want them to compete. Here's another example where, you know, the words are definitely the focus and the bow is the accent. So very trendy fit, the high waisted, the color, the denim, the jewelry, you know, the hair, like everything, the sleeve roll, everything is trendy about that. Remember, you don't have to have the bows combined only with words. You could combine it with a design like this, right? Where it's two different design elements that kind of go together. I hope that makes sense when you see a visual of a trend that is not hitting the nail on the head and then it's looking outdated. I really encourage you to go through your shop and look at your listings today and ask yourself, am I doing this in a trendy way? Is my execution trendy? Again, if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching for this, that is what myself and my team provide. And we've helped thousands of Etsy sellers at this point. If you would like our help, or even if you just want a demonstration or a clear visual of how we help, you you can just comment below help and we will just reach out to you directly and we can schedule like a free demonstration of what our guidance even looks like. If you like the video, you want me to keep talking about trends, please subscribe. It will encourage me to keep making more of these videos and we'll see you guys in the next one. The month before I started the program, I made $696. The first month after joining the coaching program, I made $4,149. And that came from 133 orders in my Etsy shop.